Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. I'm joined by the Honorable Ron Placone. Howdy, howdy, everybody. And we're going to talk about this video from Malcolm X. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that our people are scientifically maneuvered by the white man into a life of poverty. Because we are forced to live in the poorest sections of the city, we attend inferior schools. We have inferior teachers and we get an inferior education. The white power structure downtown makes certain that by the time our people do graduate, we won't be equipped or qualified for anything but the dirtiest, heaviest, poorest paying job, jobs that no one else wants. We are trapped in a vicious cycle of economic, intellectual, social, and political death. Inferior jobs, inferior housing, inferior education, which in turn again leads to inferior jobs. We spend a lifetime in this vicious circle or in this vicious cycle going in circles, giving birth to children who see no hope or future but to follow in our miserable footsteps. Powerful words. Yeah, very powerful words. And I, yeah. and I really want to, um, I want to talk about that because Obviously, that's been going See, on for a long time. A healthy um, brain. My in you know what has been happening in the black community for a very long time, but it really it's now. I mean, and and this is they've extended this now to. Um, I mean, now it's like they've figured out. Well, we could kind of extend that to everybody. <laughs> I mean, they've absolutely done it um, in in the black Lat community, the Latino community, the Native American community. But now it's like, oh, with this the 2008 housing crisis that wiped out a lot of black wealth and Latino wealth and just p middle class wealth uh, in, in America of any ethnicity. Now, now this pandemic and the CARES Act is setting everybody up for more of this. So, I mean, how do you... <laughs> When you hear that, obviously there's so much about what Malcolm X said back in the 60s. I've done numerous videos on it just recently that are so on point today. I mean, if he was alive today, they would just call him an insane person or something, or I don't know what would happen. But what, what when you hear this, obviously what he's talking about, he said this in the 60s, but as it relates to today, how do you, how do you see this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know, the middle class has been eroding for a very long time. And it, it does not, uh, it does not discriminate between races or ethnicities. It's applying to everyone. And I, I think, I think Carlin kind of nailed that, um, you know, in was it the 2008 special when he was just saying, look, they, they just want, they want people that are just, competent enough to, you know, keep their system going, but aren't tuned in enough to realize that they're getting screwed over. Yeah. And they're just going to, you know, keep going along with it. They don't want a society capable of critical thinking. Um, and that's that's really just what the ruling class does. And, and as, you know, the middle class has completely eroded, we don't have a middle class anymore. Yeah. It doesn't exist. So that middle class that existed in the 60s, um, you know, it, it's pretty much gone. I mean, and even then the ruling class was starting to rear its head because, you know, I mean, people like Malcolm X, people like, you know, Fred Hampton, um, there were a lot of white people listening to them too. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they made those connections between, you know, race struggles and class struggles. Of course, it's not a, a total overlap, but there's definitely some overlap. And it's like, hey, they don't want, they want us fighting against each other. You well, know, yeah, they, they, they want- getting along. I mean, like when Fred mm -hmm. Hampton, went to the those those southern whites that were in the hillbilly harlem neighborhood of chicago and said capitalism is causing this is causing race racism and race problems when bobby kennedy was waking up to the fact and martin luther king were waking up to the fact wow there's a lot of poor white people in this country too obviously the black community get always gets it worse always right. gets it worse. right 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 but like wow and now like you said the ruling class over the last four or five decades has gone, oh man, we can stick it to everybody. And what was left of the middle class just got knocked out in the last three, four months. And is oh, big time. I don't see it coming back. 
No, it's not. I mean, it, it, it's because it, it's gone in the sense that it is just kind of with like the baby boomer generation, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're just literally the last ones that 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 just, you know, had a middle class. It, it's completely gone. So, you know, like Gen X doesn't have it. Millennials don't have it. Uh, Zoomers have it even worse than everybody else. So, yeah, we have no middle class. We have no middle class. I mean, this is capitalism to the nth degree. Yeah, it's it's un it's really like and I'm going to do a segment on it a little bit, but the the looming 28 million evictions is like no joke. That's coming. And that's going to be brutal. And you know, I, I don't think, you know, I think people who, you know, make a nice six-figure income and some of them think they're closer to the 1% than they are to the working class. And they're really going to find out how mistaken they are. Because let's say you make, I don't know, let's say three hundred thousand dollars a year. That's a, that's a really great salary. You're seven hundred grand away from even just being a millionaire. You are, you know, ninety nine <laughs> million uh, seven hundred thousand dollars away from having a hundred million dollars. You're only two hundred and fifty grand away from making fifty grand. You're two hundred and seventy five grand away from being the working poor. You know, and that's what's worrisome is somebody who makes two, three hundred grand a year and maybe they have a little condo they rent out or a three bed, you know, a, a, a four unit apartment complex that they've been. That's an income property, you know, that's making them. But then that's getting wiped out. I know people who had good salaries and they didn't qualify for unemployment and now they're burning through their savings. Yeah. Like what's everyone, everyone who had savings you know, they should say you should have six months of savings. Everyone that had, most people don't, but all the people that did, well, that's getting close to running out. I mean, if you got unemployment, great. If you got some sort of, you know, you have a small business owner and you got a loan or an EIDL or something, and some of that's forgiven, some isn't, but even that window is closing on that. I mean, the unemployment's ending. And so it's like, you know, what Malcolm X said, it's almost like he gave that speech and the ruling class went, hey, yeah, do this to everybody. You know, he just gave us a manual. This right. is okay. great. We can do this to everyone, and then awesome. Yeah, we, we that's that's how we're going to give everybody equality. We're going to stick it to everybody the way we, mm. you know. And so, um, I don't know. As we, you know, we're in month. What is it? March, April, May, June, July. Oh, we're in the sixth month now. I mean, who's counting? The time just flies when you're having a great time. You know, <laughs> how do you? I mean, where do you see all of this happening? I mean, uh, well, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head with if nothing is done about the I mean, what should we call it? Like the eviction apocalypse or what? Like right. if nothing's done about that, we're in a lot of trouble. I mean, it's I, I mean, I guess you you heard 28. I mean, I heard up to 40 million people nationwide will potentially lose their homes uh, if nothing's done about that, I mean, I mean, that's an insane number. First of all, you know, everybody who thinks that, you know, we get rid of Trump and all the problems go away uh, on November 4th. If you really think that you should be fighting tooth and nail to make sure people don't leave their homes, because this is just an objective truth here. If nothing's done about what happens to the po- uh, what's happening to the Postal Service, which apparently they're stalling some of that. Um, but if nothing's done about that, nothing significant's done about that, and if nothing's done about the 40 million people that are going to lose their homes, there is no way, and, and this has nothing to do with how I feel about Joe Biden, this has nothing to do with how anyone feels about Biden or Trump or anything else, there is just no way in a scenario like that an incumbent Republican loses an election. It's just not going to happen. Right. So he, like Trump will for sure win. If nothing is done about either of those two things, he will for sure win. It's just a guarantee. You can you can yell at lefties on YouTube and Twitter all yeah. you want. <laughs> they have nothing to do with either of those things. And if nothing is done about either of those things, Trump ain't going anywhere. That's just a guarantee. Well, it's the thing we were talking about earlier. I mean, you've got like the Lincoln Project, which is a very conservative organization endorsing Joe Biden. So... Joe Biden is getting a lot of the moderate. He's got the moderate Republican vote locked up. I mean, like, uh, and, and even if, but, but like, even if, even if whoever wins, 
Whoever did you see? Uh, did you see John Kasich standing on that goofy crossroads sort of football looking field thing, just giving his speech? Yeah, and he so it's, <laughs> it's. I mean, that's the thing too. Like, whoever's the president, they're going to have to deal with this. And the twenty-eight million evictions. To clarify that number, that's twenty-eight million estimated properties or apartments. That's not number right. of people. I mean, it's probably like you say, 40 or 50 million people. I mean, anyone that has a roommate, married, kids, spouse, whatever. So it's, you take all 28, million. you're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood. If the average number is, I don't know, two or three per, per household, you're talking about 50 to 60 million people out on the streets. They just evicted a woman in Memphis, Tennessee with COVID. And oh my god, and the cop showed up and we're like, Hey, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, that's what the Nazi said. And that's the thing, you don't have to do your job. Police officers, mil soldiers, you can say no to this, you can just say, I'm not doing this. And so, I mean, is that what you got into the police department for is to kick an old woman out on the street who has COVID, which then becomes a health risk? Like the health department was saying, This is you shouldn't evict her. And the cops were like, Sorry, we're idiots, and we, you know, I, I don't know. You can't expect us to think for ourselves. Yep. They make sure that people that do that don't get these jobs in the first place. They have a lot of things put in place <laughs> so that people that actually do that will not get these jobs in the first place. I was recruited out of dumb school, so this is why <laughs> they, I got the job. Um, yeah, it'll be... It'll Over be at the Dead Face Academy, I was a top student failing up <laughs> for years. <laughs> Give me your best C minus student. Give me your best C minus student. Give me, <laughs> give me those C minus students. I want them on the police to force. I want somebody just, just smart enough that they can memorize some of our ridiculous policies, but clueless enough that they will never ask questions. Get me a bunch of those. Can you read and write, but are devoid of critical thinking? Then the police department wants you. You're in. You're, you're in. You're in. <laughs> can you barely sign your name? You get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well all right so thank you malcolm x for explaining to us 50 some years ago what's happening today <laughs> sorry we missed uh the warning there sorry we sorry we missed that sorry yep. we missed uh sorry malcolm x sorry martin luther king sorry sorry fred hampton fred hampton by the way making these connections at the age of 21 21 I, I still can't believe that. I, I know that like like people that watch, you know, like get your news on with Ron and, and all the other shows, like like I say that constantly because it just blows my mind. He was making those connections. And you look at his audiences and you see every, you see black people, white yeah. people, old people, young people, you know, they were all listening to this guy, 21 freaking years old. In an era where the country was way more segregated, like legal right? segregated. Yes. But very black and white, very separate. And, and this guy just dropping truth. I mean, man, it's just humbling. Yeah. Listening to that guy. And and just, I mean, I mean, I know this isn't like a, a perfect comparison because, you know, one's a comedian, but I mean, it's like you listen to the early Dick Gregory albums yeah. and stuff like that. And, and even like some of the early Red Fox stuff. And, and you think about what was going on in society at that time. And you're just... Oh man, man, this is when comedy was dangerous with a spark, man. Yeah. This is powerful stuff. And Fred Hampton, you know, like that was powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. And the FBI was like, man, we got to shut this guy up. And, you know, and for Dick Gregory, they were like, we got to keep an eye on this guy. We got to keep an eye on this guy for the rest of his freaking life. Let's make sure he doesn't get too famous. Yeah. Yeah, that that Dick, like, he never got too famous. Like we, no, he really comic, didn't. But never was a mainstream guy. Like older people might remember him if they were big comedy fans. But he's not like Cosby or one of those names that everybody remembers. It's like no, nah, they made sure they kept Ger Gregory pretty close. He didn't get a lot of TV spots. He yeah. didn't get in sitcom. I mean, Cosby was the safer Dick yep. Gregory. So yep. so it's like Dick Gregory was kind of. I mean, I, I think they were both from a comedic standpoint. Uh, obviously. One, you know, had a, had a much uh, better better history as a human being behaving than the other. But, you know, um, I, I think they were equally as good. But Cosby was kind of the acceptable for the mainstream where Dick Gregory wasn't. Uh, I told you about when I met him, right? 
No, you met Dick Gregory. I met him. Yeah, once too, Hollywood dude, Empire. I met him. I mean, I just I had my uh, vinyl copy of one of his albums like you'd expect me to have. And I just I just sort of met him and just kind of babbled. It's an honor over and over again. Like, <laughs> I was just I, I was a little tongue tied. So like I, I just meet him. And he's like, hey, man, what's your number? I'm like, I'm Ron. And, and he's like, are you a comic here, Ron? And I was like, yeah, I'm a comic. It's such an honor. I was like, man, it's just really an honor. And he's like, uh, all right, Ron. And he signed my final. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I've, I've only gotten tongue-tied a few times in my life. I, I Meeting Dick Gregory was one time. Meeting Amy Goodman was the other time. I yeah, think I, uh, she would probably say the same thing about me. She's like, oh, he's the it's an honor guy. <laughs> That's yeah, all he says. I met him probably three or four years ago at the improv, uh, he just came in. I was there early, I think to do this podcast I was doing called, um, pop divas with Joe Wagner. We did four episodes. It was very successful. And, um, he just walked in. I was like, Oh, Hey, Mr. Gregory, how are you? know, And it was like, it was really, it was really awesome. Maybe it was late at night. I can't remember. I think it, I can't remember, but anyway, it was at the improv and it was, it was awesome to meet him. But everybody um, like share and subscribe hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before, because they're unsubscribing many of you every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.